How many know we've been teaching about spiritual warfare? Amen. Have y'all been encountering any spiritual warfare? But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. We, we have the victory. So let's go to Luke chapter 10. Verse what? Verse 19. Our foundational scripture. As we teach on these things, as we talk about the spirit world and the natural world, about the kingdom of darkness. or You know, Satan has a kingdom. How many of y'all, we learned that last week? Amen. Bible tells us that. And that kingdom has an order to it. Amen? Yes. But uh, the king of kings has the bigger kingdom. Amen? Amen. And there is warfare that's going on. The Bible teaches us about that spiritual warfare going on. And it's still going on right now. And that's why we have this scripture to be our foundational scripture. Because you do not want to be afraid of the devil. The devil needs to be afraid of you. Amen. He has authority, he has power. But you've got more authority and more power. Amen. And that's why we learned this. Father, in the name of Jesus, open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts. Teach us, Holy Spirit. You're the great teacher. Lead us and guide us. Let your incorruptible seed of your word penetrate our hearts today and change our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look what it says. Behold, I give you authority. He gives you authority. Say, I have authority. Because God's given it to me. Okay? Now I'm going to kind of break this down a little bit again for you. If we go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, and you can write this down if you're taking notes. It says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in what? In the Lord. In other words, be strong out of your unity with God, is what the Amplified says. Out of a relationship with God, you have strength, and in the power of His might. Might overcomes everything. Amen? Amen? Amen. And He's Almighty God. So when He says, I give you authority, then when you take that authority, when you believe it, to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, say all the power of the enemy. That leaves all all of the power of the enemy, and it says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So say, I don't have a spirit of fear, fear. but a power power. of love love. and of a sound mind. mind. How many of you know that's the scripture? God has not given me a spirit of fear. God has given me authority over the spirit of fear. That's what this scripture tells me. Okay? So when fear comes, when we start talking about demonic things and we start talking about spiritual things, some people get in fear, and fear is a spirit that comes from the Dark side, as we'd say, or from the kingdom of darkness. I'm not talking about Star Wars, okay, y'all don't. But we have authority over all the power of the enemy. And I love that. And nothing shall by any means hurt you unless you let it. Y'all know faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So your faith is what you're hoping for. But fear produces what you dread. And what you, what you, when the devil tells you a lie and you believe that lie, it'll produce fear in you. Yeah. Well, listen, whenever, whenever you're tempted to fear, guess what? Resist the devil. Yeah. Resist fear. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And you all wake up in the middle of the night and you had a dream or something's going on and you just wake up and all of you kind of shaking a little bit fierce trying to get on you. Amen? Yeah. Start praising God. Yeah. Start giving God thanks. Go on, if you have a nightmare, if you're having problems with dreams, when you wake up from that dream, start thanking God for that dream. Yeah. Say, I want to thank you, Lord, for that dream. I didn't realize I still had fear, but I'm giving you thanks because, listen, I've repented my fear. I'm letting you give me faith. Man, the devil's in there trying to give you fear. He's getting out of there when you start praising God and thanking God. Yeah. Thanksgiving is one of the weapons you use to put the enemy in his place. Yeah. We begin to acknowledge God as bigger and better and greater than the enemy. So when we talk about the devil or demons or the demonic realm or the kingdom of darkness, we're not trying to build him up, but he is for real. Amen? Amen. And uh, John 10.10, 10, let's go there real quick, because we need to see clearly there's a division between what the enemy does and what God do, does. John 10.10 10 tells us the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So if, if there's some stealing and killing and destroying going on, it's not God, it's the thief. Do not blame God. But he said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Not just life, abundant life. That's good life. Amen. 
Now, on, on communion Sundays for the new people, the kids stay in for, for communion Sundays because we would like for them to have communion with the family. Amen? Everybody stays in so they all get to hear pastor preach. At least once a month. Amen? So there's no children's church uh, today. Amen? We still have nursery and toddlers. We'll be glad that you're here. Amen? So we have authority over all of the power of the enemy. Now, we got to begin to exercise this authority. Amen. Amen. Now, we, we talked last week. Who was here last week? Okay. Glad to see you back again. We can continue on. I would like to teach everything again to get everybody caught up, but we still want to move a little bit forward as we go. And amen. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Let's go there. Ephesians 6, 10. This is one of the best scriptures in the New Testament in, in the entire, entire Bible to teach us about what's going on in spiritual warfare, what's going on, you know, in the, in the spirit realm. And this is what I was just quoting. Finally, my brethren, because of what I've told you all the way through the book of Ephesians, and you need, it's a good time to be reading the book of Ephesians as we're teaching on this. He says, be strong in the Lord, not in your own strength, not in your own works. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, in his might, in his strength. Look, look at the next scripture. Put on the whole armor of God. That means we're, we're not only a bride, but we're an army. And we need to be armed with the armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles, and that means the schemes, the plans of the enemy. The wiles of the devil. The devil has plans and schemes to try to destroy you. Amen. You'll need to understand that. And he has a kingdom that's set up where there's hierarchy and there's, I mean, there's principal. Go to the next, the next scripture. It'll start to break it down. For we do not wrestle against people in bodies. Amen. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But against what? Principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenlies or in heavenly places. Now when we study the scripture we find out when we go to first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul talks about a man who he knew for 14 years that was caught up to the third heaven. How many of y'all have read that before in your Bible? There's not just one heaven, okay? It tells us about there's three heavens, and it says when Jesus was raised from the dead, he was seated far above the heavens, plural. Amen? We try to explain that a little bit today. And the first scripture in the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. So there's more than one heaven. I mean, if we're going to take English, and it logically, if there's a third heaven, there's got to be a first and second heaven, right? Amen. Now, most theologians believe this. The first heaven they're talking about is at night when you look at the stars and the moon and the sky, the heavens, that natural heavens. Then that third heaven is that when we read it, it says he was caught up to paradise. That's God's heaven. That's where God's throne is. And we find out through the scripture and theology, I'm not going to turn all these scriptures for you today, but you keep coming, we're going to get through them. Amen. That Satan was cast out of heaven. Y'all ever heard that before? He was Lucifer and he was cast out of that heaven of heavens. And he was thrown to the earth or into the spiritual realm of the heavens of the earth. So there's a heavens between us and God. And I believe it's this atmosphere, spiritual realm that we don't see that's in the earth. So right now, if we believe the Bible, there are angels in here that we cannot see. And there are demonic spirits in here that we cannot see, or fallen angels that we cannot see. Because it says that when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, he took one third of the angels with him. So they're angels, but they're angels that are rebelling against God. But we can't see them, but they're, they're entities that are behind the scenes that we cannot see. And I talked last week about thrones and principalities and powers and you know, dominion, y'all remember that. How it transcends the natural and the spiritual realm. Come on, if y'all remember, say amen. Because I'll teach it again. Because we need to get these things. We're Christians and we're fighting a, a war and we don't even understand what's going on. Now, just common sense lets you know that, and we know this, when, when, when look at this structure, it says principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness... Uh, of, of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenlies. When Satan's kingdom, and, and we looked at uh, Matthew chapter 12, it says, if Satan's kingdom is divided against itself, it will not stand. Jesus said Satan has a kingdom. 
Not me, the Bible. We covered that last week. We can go back there and look at it again, again, but there's a kingdom. There's structure in his kingdom. Do you all understand that? It's, it's like an army. And whenever the, the angels, Satan and these angels broke away, there remained a hierarchy. Of, uh, and I believe this. There are certain principalities or spiritual forces that control certain areas. Do you all realize that? Okay. Do you all realize in cultures there's different principalities and powers that control cultures and, and want to control cultures? Amen? And so when the United States was started, do y'all realize that we started in rebellion against the country? So there's, there, there is a spirit of rebellion in, the, in, in America, in the heart of America, to, to just be rebellious and be prideful. You know, we always want it our way. Y'all don't say amen too much. You know. And you know what the Bible says about rebellion? It is as the sin of witchcraft. So to continue to rebel and be rebellious, we've got to start practicing what the Bible talks about is witchcraft. And witchcraft doesn't mean getting chicken feet and bones and putting them in a thing. It's any time you manipulate people with lies to try to get what you want. Amen. You all know any people that manipulate people with lies to get what they want? Or a position in government? Or they become anything that they need to be so that they can win? Come on, let's, let's talk for real. That's why, where are we going to fight this battle? Are we going to fight it in the natural or are we going to fight it the way the Bible says to fight it? We've got to fight it the way he says to fight it. Guess what? We have more power to change the history of the world than anyone else. The church on our knees has more power to change the world than any natural thing. But we've got to realize that there's a spiritual battle going on. And this is taught throughout the scripture. Not just little pieces. Human history starts in the spirit realm and is worked out in the natural realm. That's why the Bible's already written and God already knows how it's going to end. Do you realize that? So I'd be on his side. It's, I always wanted, you know, the devil wasn't very smart to be a created being and fo- try to overthrow God. That was like, you know, hello. So we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against these principalities and powers. We're not fighting our wars, not against natural things. So, so whenever we start talking about spiritual forces, don't start thinking about people. Now, the enemy uses people. But if you love the people that the enemy is using, you have the ability to change those people's lives. And your life will change too. Because when you start focusing on flesh and blood, guess what you do? You get offended at the person, and you're now on the wrong team. The enemy uses offense, bitterness, unforgiveness to keep you bound up. He wants us to be a slave to darkness. He wants us to walk in the dark. He doesn't want us to understand that there's light, and there's power, and there's a purpose. There's a purpose for this ministry to be here. There's a purpose that you're here today. There's a purpose that you're the husband in your family. There's a purpose you may be the grandpa in your family. And I just became a grandpa. Hallelujah. Amen. And and you have authority. And God gives you not only authority, but authority to deal with the strong man or the strongholds or the familiar spirits or the things that have been holding your family in bondage for, for decades or centuries or, or years or whatever. You have the authority to break this curse and this thing out of your life and your family. And we have the authority as a church to change our community, to see people get set free from bondage. Amen. Amen. But we've got to start fighting this war the way the Bible teaches us to fight it. Yeah. How many of y'all believe in the power of prayer? Amen. Why? Because it changes things. Yeah. And the effects that are taking place in our life usually start, usually, not all the time. Natural accidents happen, natural things happen that just don't have nothing to do with anything. But we live in a fallen world and whenever your body breaks, it can die. Do you realize that? You can't always blame the, the devil, God, some things just, accidents just happen. Now, I, I believe that. And we want to blame God, but you, you can't. God's a good God. The thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. And every one of us have, has, the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy in our lives. 
Anybody ever been through anything? Lost a loved one? Felt like nobody loved you? Was depressed? Ever thought about killing yourself? All those kind of things come from the wicked one. And we have authority over those things. And we need to start fighting back with the word of God and in prayer. That's what this is going to teach us right here. Go to the next scripture. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the uh, stand in that evil day and having done all to stand. Some days are just evil days. Because we live in a fallen world and the Bible teaches us and, and these are scriptures have been over time and time again that the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. If you're not born again, you're still walking in darkness. And you don't even really know what's going on because you're walking in darkness. When you are born again, when you become a child of God, you are translated into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of the son of his love. You begin to see and you've got to grow. It's like being a baby just born. It takes a little while for you to begin to understand what's going on. But y'all don't stay babies forever. Let's grow up, Amen. sons and daughters of God. And understand that there are principalities and powers and, 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 and there are familiar spirits and different things that want to keep us from fulfilling our destiny and breaking through for our families. Amen. That's why we need one another. Amen. You know, I stayed up all night except for about an hour last night praying. <laughs> Beginning to, to, to say, God, I want to see what's happening over our lives. In, in the invisible world, what is that that's holding my family back? What's holding me back? Okay, what is it that's holding the church back? What, what, what spirit, what strong man who comes in and, and binds up our treasures that God has given us? Binds up the people that God has given us that we don't really break through and really make the changes that we need to make. And to really learn that the power is on our knees in prayer. When we're praising, we're not just singing songs. Some of us are there, we're watching our watch instead of watching Jesus. When we are actually doing spiritual warfare, if you're truly worshiping him, the devil hates worship because they said, so like I said, the theologian said he was probably the worship leader in heaven before he was cast out of heaven. So we took his place in heaven. He hates us. He hates for us to praise God. He hates for us to praise God together. He hates for us as enemies sometimes or when we're mad at each other, offended at each other. Satan hates for us to come and have communion together and forgive. Amen. Yes. Amen. To let it go. Amen. To grow. He wants to keep us trapped. So I was praying last night. And I want to tell you, one, one, one of the things that, that's got a lot of people in here, including myself, is, that has gotten us off or keeps us bound up or keeps us like in chains is the spirit of rejection. I mean, that was one of the things he spoke to me. I, I see manifestations of different things, and Stacy and I was talking about that this morning. Th this happens, and somebody does this, and somebody does that. and You know, it can be an addiction. It can be this. It can, but you know what? What is the root? What brought them to that place? They were rejected. You may have been rejected someplace to where when you got rejected, you got hurt, and then you say, I don't care anymore. Uh oh, and then what happens to your life when you don't care anymore, when you get indifferent about the things of God because you've been hurt. And then when you get hurt once or twice or three times and then you start not caring what God thinks anymore. And then the devil's got you. You know what? God will heal you. How many in here has been rejected? Probably everybody has in some kind of way. Rejected by a parent, rejected by a brother, rejected by a spouse, rejected by, you know, your children. And when you get rejected, it hurts. Amen. Amen. You can be in ministry and be rejected by people in ministry and, and it begins to affect your ministry. You realize that. But there's a way to respond that you can take authority over these things and walk free. You've got to forgive, let go, and trust God. Amen. 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 
And quit blaming the people that rejected you. And quit always talking about, but if you would just know what I've been through. I don't know what you've been through, but you don't know what I've been through. Amen. 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 Because everybody goes through things. But when we get rejected, and, and sometimes it's the enemy just making you think somebody rejected you when they didn't. I was at the hospital and nobody came to visit me. Nobody at that church loves me. Nobody called to check on me. Did you call anybody and give them an update? You know? And let me tell you, in this day and age, when some people go to the hospital and have surgery or do something, it's a private thing. They don't really want anybody to know about it. And then others want everybody to know about it. How is everybody supposed to figure all this out? The enemy plays in all that to keep people offended at everyone else. When you should be in relationship with one another, if something's going wrong in your life, call somebody you know that's in the body of Christ and ask for help. You have not because you would. Ask not. I know y'all think God's got a red phone on the side of my bed and whenever you pray, he rings the phone and says, oh, let me tell you, Stacy just prayed and she's on the other side of the town and, and, and she's wanting some help and... Yeah, no pastor sleeping. <laughs> Amen. Let, let's talk practically about this stuff. Because I've gone before to, to a family whenever they're in the hospital and they're going through something. And, and when I walk in, the family's like, what are you doing here? It's kind of like I was intruding and I felt uncomfortable. And others... You, you're very welcome and you feel comfortable. How do you know which one's which? So we got to grow up. Amen? So let's, let's keep going with this. In that evil day, what do you got to do? You've got to put on the armor of God. You've got to learn to stand. See, Jesus accomplished everything you need on the cross already. Now you've got to maintain what he has obtained. That's good right there. You've got to maintain what he obtained on the cross. But we're trying to obtain something that we can't obtain because he did it for us. We're just supposed to believe it and receive it and maintain it. And when the enemy tries to come steal it, he don't let him have it. If he comes try to steal your joy, you maintain what he's already obtained for you. That's good. We could change the title of this. Maintain what he obtained. He's already done the work. When we try to obtain it, we're trying to work to get it, and then it's not grace. Wow. When it's grace, all you're doing is believing for what he's already obtained for you. He's obtained healing. Now, maintain your healing. Grab a hold of it and believe it and let it be manifest in your life. It's a finished work. By his stripes, you are healed. Maintain your joy. He's obtained it already. Maintain your riches. He's obtained. He became poor that you might stay poor. No, it says that you might become rich. He says he gives you the power to get wealth that you might establish the covenant. But let me tell you, if, if every time you, you, your business starts to grow or you're about to have this breakthrough and you want to build the kingdom of God and you want to use money to build the kingdom of God. And it's something that holds you back. You better start praying and say, God, what is that strong man that's holding back your riches and my riches that I'm supposed to have to release into the kingdom? And when he shows you, you bind that strong man. You know, the Bible says what you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Amen. It says when you bind it on earth in the same time you're binding it on earth, it gets bound in heaven. Wow. So you bind up the strong man because the stronger one lives in us. Then all of a sudden, which the treasure of God is you. Y'all are his treasure. Amen. So as a church, whatever strong man trying to hold us back, as we're learning on Sunday night to pray, as we're learning on Sunday mornings how to do spiritual warfare, let's not just talk about it. Let's start doing it and see some people get set free. Amen. See this place explode with people coming in and, and being delivered. Amen. Lives being changed. Power again. 
Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He went about casting out demons. And deaf and mute people began to speak and hear. Blind people began to see. Lame people began to walk. Wow. That was his power. And what he says, I give you authority. Then he says, when you get the Holy Spirit, he says, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall have power to be witnesses unto me. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Power to be witnesses. Say power. power. God, he, he obtained it. We got to maintain it. Don't be trying to get power. He's, a, he's ready to give you power, so don't try to make up your own power. Now, now I, I want, just get this. Just go with me a little bit. Y'all with me this morning? We're talking about spiritual things. As a human being, even if you're not born again, your human spirit has power. Because you were originally created in the likeness of God and the, and the similitude of God. Amen? And there's a lot of things humans can do without God. That's why we see that take place. But just think when you have God and your spirit and God's spirit become one and you're energized by the spirit of God. So I'm praying and y'all need to be praying that we could see, discern, look into the spirit world and find out what is holding us back. Bind up that strong man so that the, the riches in your house the, and in the body of Christ and in this community that have been in bondage all these years can be set free. Amen. Amen. We're not trying to get people from other churches to come. There's enough sinners out there. We don't need church transfer. There's enough people to fill up all the churches. Amen. Amen. Now, just be careful for the ones, whenever you get saved, you get born again, you start getting connected to the church, they want to change you and make you go to their church because there's the, they're the right church, they're the only church. You better be careful with them right only people. Amen. Because what they're going to do is give you law, and law is a principality. You got this rule and that rule and that rule and that rule. If you don't keep all of our rules, then you don't fit in our category. And they will not really fellowship with you, accept you, or use you until you fit into all their rules. Wow. I think once you get born again, God can use you that second. I even seen him use sinners. He used a donkey. He used my brother one time. <laughs> I didn't call him a donkey. That was two different subjects. But he said, amen. I had to, I had to. He got my attention. He's my encourager. If he can use two Bayou Blancs, he can use a redneck. He can even use somebody from Moorville. Blosheville. Some of them, some of them little towns have some mean principalities. But then you know, when you cross the river, don't you realize on this side of the Red River we deal with one kind of spiritual atmosphere. When you go to the cross the Red River, go over the, you're dealing with a different mindset and different. That's what I'm talking about. You ever notice whenever you drive into New Orleans that you start to feel something different? They got all that voodoo and all that stuff. And there's the spiritual forces over, over that city. When you go to New York City, there's a different kind of spiritual force that, that's trying to control the people. When you go to any, I could keep naming cities. When you go into Jerusalem, you're going to be dealing with different principalities. When you go to Africa, you're going to feel something different. Amen. Because it's, that's how the kingdom of, of the enemy is set up. You go over Washington, they got different principalities and powers working over there. And you know what they want to do? They want to keep us in bondage and control us. And if we try to fight them in the natural, we will not change anything. Amen. You've got to fight them the way the scripture is fixing to tell us to fight them. Because we're still talking about offense, I mean defense. I want to get to the offense. On what we need to do. But y'all can recognize those different. How about San Francisco? How many of you know there's a different spirit over there? Homosexuality and sexual immorality is a whole different thing. Now They have it all over the world. But manifest different over there than in New Orleans. Than, than in New York or in, in, in different places. And you can feel it if you can discern just a little bit. Whenever you go into any of these cities or go to these places. You'll feel it. 
Amen? Amen. Now, when I became a young preacher, when I first started preaching, I had a vision of a multicultural church to come together where we would not look at each other according to our skin or our culture, but the character of the heart. And we're all Christians of the body of Christ. And we need to love one another no matter what the outward appearance is. Amen? Amen. So we got to put prejudice under our feet. Amen. we got to truly love one another. But at the same time, we got to get to know one another. Because not everybody thinks like you white boys. Amen. Amen. We don't all think the same. And it's not that one is different or better than the other. It's what we've been through to get to where we are. Amen. Amen. The African Americans, they don't think the same way as you because they went through their whole life, went through a time of slavery that we as white Caucasians don't totally understand. But you know what? Our better days are ahead of us. If anyone's in Christ, it's a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Now, I didn't know this, but whenever uh, I was invited to preach at uh, Earl Alexander's church, a seven-day revival, as a young preacher, and I went there, and uh, that would be known as, as they would say, a black church, a black Baptist church. And I was there preaching. And about the third to last night, the Lord moved on my heart, and I washed all the preacher's feet and all the deacon's feet, and I repented for the sins of my fathers and forefathers and how it affected them, and and because I just was moved on by the Holy Spirit to do that. So that that principality could not affect me. I wanted to be free from any of that kind of prejudice. And I wanted them to accept me as a brother in Christ, no longer looking at each other through color. That was my heart. It's desire. Now, does everybody agree with that and walk in that? It doesn't matter. It's what God tells you to do. And within just a few weeks after that, I have a dream. And in this dream, some things happen. And the Lord tells me to go to see Chief Barbary before he passed away. This was years ago. This was when the cow palace was there. Before all that took place. And I went to his office and repented to him. And I said, I want to repent of all the sins of my father and forefathers. That when they came preaching the gospel and taking away what belonged to y'all, that's not the gospel I understand now. And I shared the gospel with him, shared the dream with him. He was looking at me like, what kind of weird boy are you, you know? (laughs) No, he actually said, "What, what, what, what church you go to? I said, I go to the church down the road over here. I said, but I want to know, will you forgive me? Will you, will you forgive me and my fathers and forefathers for what we did? And he said, I sure wouldn't. It was like this thing just lifted off of me. When I walked out of his office, I thought I was going to levitate. Because <laughs> I got free. And you see, these are two different cultures that I am now ministering to in this community. And then, you know, I was thinking about that last night. I said, but how about the Hispanics? I never really got to minister to the Hispanics. And he says, you got two Hispanic daughters. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Yeah, that took one day. This is going to take a lifetime. But see, spiritual warfare, you've you got to check your heart. You've you, you got to get yourself set free. Right. You've got to quit blaming others for where you are. You've got to take responsibility of what you've got to do. So whatever the strong man that's over you, whatever principality, whatever familiar spirit has got you bound up, you deal with it. Come on, man of God. Come on, if, if there's something going on that's holding your family back, stand up and take authority over it. You have authority over all the power of the enemy. Yeah. And you can't, you, you, Paul said you can't swing at it like you're fighting in a fight because you're just fighting it, you're swinging at air. Paul teaches us to fight. Let's keep going. 
Stand therefore, having girt your waist with the truth. And we're not going to get into all the, the armor of God right now, but that you've got to put on this armor. You've got to begin to speak the truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, righteousness by faith, not by works. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You've got to understand the gospel, be able to share the gospel, be able to tell somebody what happened to you. Look at the next one. Above all, take up the shield of faith. This is this big shield that can block everything, it says, which will quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. Amen? Take up the helmet of salvation. That means we've got to start thinking right. Protect our minds. And it says, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Finally get into a weapon right here. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Y'all need to make some faith declarations over your life, over your children's lives, over the church, over your pastor, over your leaders. Amen? Amen. And understand that everyone, like I was talking about the spirit of rejection, when it comes, when something happens to you, when you go through a divorce, when you go through something like, you know, being in a meeting or a board meeting and, and they reject you or something like that, and you, you get hurt and it makes you want to quit, don't quit. Yeah. Forgive. Yeah. Walk with God. Let it go. Rise above. Yeah. And you know what? God will forgive you. They might not forgive. They might not forget. But God does. Yeah. And you've got to examine your heart to find out what you need to change, what you need to do. Because let me tell you, when you get rejected, whenever you get hurt, you will let go and sometimes do stuff you would never do whenever you was healthy and ready to fight. Because all of a sudden you feel like you're all alone and it pulls you down. That's demonic attack. So don't judge somebody on their behavior if you see them do something wrong or act wrong or act mad one time. Uh, in, in their life and, and then all of a sudden you, you're going to think about that person according to that one thing for the rest of their lives I know a very famous preacher that I was in relationship with and I, I'm not going to mention his name traveled all over the world very 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 popular change in people's lives where one person came to me and said God what a hypocrite I went to a place where uh, this guy was cutting his hair and he was real sassy to the one that was cutting his hair going to judge a man who's been changing lives because she thought he was a little too sassy with the barber. Barber shops are dangerous. I'll leave it there. But you see, you can't. What about you when you had a bad day? What if there was a camera at your house that was hidden behind there and we, we caught all your fussing? Amen? Amen. We've got to be gracious. Amen? Forgiving, loving. And understand that everybody, whenever you go through something, when you're rejected or you're hurt or, or you have a loss or, or something like that, you, you're hurting. When you lose someone you love, you're hurting. And you need healing. And we should be trying to heal one another instead of push each other harder whenever someone's hurting. Amen. But the sword of the Spirit. Finally, we, we pick up the Word of God. We make, make faith declarations. Greater is He that's in me than he, than he that's in the world. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven, that he knows his sins. I'm blessed yeah. because my sins are forgiven. I'm excited about that. Amen. When I found out when you get born again, that your slate becomes clean between you and God. Man, my slate was full of stuff before I got born again. I had a lot of junk on my, my blackboard, whiteboard, whatever color board you want to call it. But he erased it all. And he says, you get to have a new life. And if anyone's in Christ, old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. He's a new creature. He's a new creation. And then guess what? Even after you're a child of God, when you mess up and you repent, He washes you and cleanses you. Amen. It's good stuff. But let's not just look at the sword of the words, because I'm talking about the word right now. Okay? Look at this next scripture. Let's talk about the missiles now. Let's talk about some, some things that can cross the whole planet right now and change lives. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Wow. 
Once we put on all this armor, yeah, we got, we got to defend ourselves against the accusations of the enemy. we got to have all this on. But let me tell you, if you want to know what true spiritual warfare is, it's right there. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Praying. Praying. And tonight at 6 o'clock, they're not only talking about praying, they are praying. And they're going to st- we've been starting praying in there after a few weeks of praying in there. Now, next week, we're having the Super Bowl Sunday. We want you to sign up. Come have a good time with us. We're going to take off for that Sunday just to fellowship. Amen. And have a good time. But we're going to kick it back off. We're going to be praying out there a few times. Then we're going to move the prayer in here. And we're going to actually do some corporate prayer. And we're going to do some warfare. And we're going to see some lives change. We're going to see some of y'all children come back to Christ. Amen. And as I was staying up all night last night, I started thinking about my family, about my children, about what's happening in my life. How many of y'all know my story? Basically know my story. Okay. Let me, I started thinking, and, and God says, as long as you still have a relationship, they're not lost. Amen. Come on. So whenever someone does something wrong, if one of your children do something you don't like, still, you've got to still have that, that relationship where you can still speak into their lives and let them see the love of God. And as long as you still have that relationship, and the enemy wants to break that more than anything, for as a father, what we've been talking about, you, you patriarchs and matriarchs, we need to be learning the word of God and passing it down to, to, to our children, our children's children. And I'm a grandpa now, so I can say children's children. I got one of those. And she's so pretty. A girl? And, and, and after spending the day with her yesterday, her image is burned in my spirit. Not in my mind, in my spirit. Now get that. So there's a reason to do this warfare, guys. It's not just about us. It's not just about you. What's going to happen to the next generation and the next generation? If we don't stand up and begin to live the gospel and preach the gospel and share the gospel, they're going to be lost in the midst of this transition. The enemy wants to break their relationship. And I was so pleased to know that I have a relationship with my three sons. I talk to them on a regular basis. I have a relationship with my daughters, my stepdaughters. Amen. I got a relationship with my brothers and my sisters. And I can still speak into their lives. And as long as I still have that, where I can still speak into their lives, guess what? Devil, I can pray now and begin to build on what's, what's left right there. Do you understand that? And you can pray them in. Pray your parents in. Pray. Find out what that thing is, that, that strong man. What's his name? Bind him. Repent of where you've allowed it in your life. And then begin to pray with all prayer and supplication. Supplications when you begin. To stop looking at everybody's sin. And start looking at them through the cross. That's what that means. Don't look at their problems. Say, God, don't look at their sin. Don't judge them for their sin. Look at them through the grace that comes through the cross of Jesus Christ. It's intercession. It's supplication. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Let's let's be for real as a church. We need to repent for not really supplicating for one another, not really praying for one another, not really getting on our knees like we should be and should have been doing. Because that's where the true warfare takes place. We're going to learn about the prayers of thanksgiving. That when you start giving thanks, the enemy has no more power. Everything becomes sanctified, set apart unto God because of thanksgiving. There's so much I just would like to sometimes just download into you. When I start studying and seeing these things. And you can rebuke the enemy. Amen. You have the power to do that. Now see, once we start getting into real spiritual warfare, I'm telling you, you better know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. And exercise your authority. Begin to do, not just here, not being a babe. Next scripture. And it says, and for me. Please, church, I'll be praying for me. This apostle Paul said, and for me. That utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mysteries of the gospel. That's what my calling is, is to, to make known the mysteries of the gospel. 
Are you all learning some things about spiritual warfare? 